Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to easily design a golden ratio logo using Inkscape. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP tutorials and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So for today's tutorial, I'll be using the free Overpass font from Google Fonts. If you're not sure how to download third-party fonts and use them in Inkscape, I do have an entire help article on the subject, so I'll link that in the description of the video. But I'll minimize this, and here is my final logo design. So I have a shape element over here on the left side, and on the right side, of course, I have the text. The shape element uses the golden ratio principle. And what the golden ratio does is it allows your designs to look more proportionate so that when you scale objects up in a design or scale them down, they look more pleasing to the eye. So the ratio itself is one to 1.618 if you round. So basically we're gonna be using this principle in our design today to create a design that uses multiple shapes but still looks proportionate and pleasing to the eye. I'm also gonna be showing you a shortcut to create golden ratio shapes without having to use the golden ratio spiral that's often used when creating golden ratio design. So this method I'll be showing you today is a little bit faster, not quite as exact maybe, but definitely very close to being exact and a lot faster. So let's start by coming over here and going to File, New. This will create a new document and I'll hold Control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out. And if your Inkscape canvas doesn't look like mine, that's because I made my Inkscape canvas look like Adobe Illustrator's artboard. If you want to learn how I did that, check out the help article on my website on that subject. But the first thing I need to do is bring in a shape here. So I want to create that diamond shape that was prevalent in my mountain design that I had there. So what I did was I came over and I grabbed my square tool or the rectangle tool. And now I'm just going to click and drag to draw my square. And I'm going to hold the control key to make sure this is a perfect square to start. It doesn't necessarily matter how large it is right now. So I'll just release. Then what I'll do is hit F1 or come over and grab my selection tool. And I'll just click on this to bring up the transform handles here for the rotate option. And now I'm going to click and drag to rotate this and hold the control key until I can rotate this to negative 45 degrees, which you can see down here. So my goal here is to create a diamond shape and then I'm going to scale that diamond shape up so that I have multiple diamond shapes that all follow the golden ratio. So now what I'll do is I'll click on here and that's going to bring back my original transform handles. And I'm just going to drag this downward until we get the diamond shape we want. So how elongated this diamond shape is, is up to you. I'll go with about right here. And then I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit because this will probably be our smallest diamond. So we'll go with about right there. I also wanna get rid of the fill color, so I'll come over here and just click on this red X here and that's gonna get rid of my fill. So now we just have a diamond with a black stroke. If you don't have a black stroke, you can just shift click on the color black. Next, I want to duplicate this, so I'll hit Control D while it's still selected. And now we have two of these, one of them is selected, it doesn't matter which one. But I'll come up here and I'm just going to make sure that this little lock icon is locked. That's going to ensure my aspect ratio is locked. And then I'll click here inside of one of the dimensions, it doesn't matter if it's the width or the height. But I'm just going to hit shift and then 8, and that's going to give me that little multiply sign. And I'll type in 1.618, that's going to be the golden ratio, and when I hit the enter key, that will automatically multiply both the width and the height by 1.618. So now we have a larger diamond shape that's been scaled up based on the golden ratio. I'm just gonna repeat this process until I have four or five different shapes that are different sizes based on the golden ratio. So now I'll hit Control D to duplicate that again. Come up here, multiply it by 1.618. And I'll just repeat this one more time. I'll multiply this by 1.618, hit the enter key. So now we have four different shapes that are all scaled up based on the golden ratio. So now I'm just gonna select all of these and come over here and click on the alignment option. Make sure the alignment is relative to the page and I can just align this both vertically and horizontally to the center. And if you want these to be a different size, just click and drag the scale transform handle here. You can hold the shift key to make sure they scale from the center, like that. The next thing I need to do is make sure they all have the same stroke because right now they all have different stroke sizes. So I'll come over here and click on the fill and stroke option. 
And then I'll come up here to stroke style. I'm gonna change the width to pixels. And now I'm just going to test out maybe five pixels here. That looks pretty good. So now I can click off of this and now I have a bunch of diamond shapes here and they all have the same stroke. And I do think once again, I'm just going to scale this down a little bit more. So maybe about right there. Now what I wanna do is combine the individual diamond shapes into a single compound shape for our logo. So I'll come over here and I'll start by just dragging these shapes over off to the side and I'll just click off of them. So first I'll take the largest shape and hit Control D to duplicate that. I'm just gonna bring this over and now I'll hit Control D to duplicate that. And I'm just gonna bring this down until it snaps right here. So the two corners are snapping together and that's because I have the snap options turned on over here. And I actually think it's this option right here that's enabling the snapping to corners. And then I'll hit Control D to duplicate that again. And I'll bring this over while holding the Control key to make sure it's dragged over in straight line mode until this snaps once again. I'll hit Control D again to duplicate that and this time I'll bring it up here until it snaps to the corner. And one more time, Control D, bring this down here until it snaps. All right, so we have the first part of our shape using the larger diamonds. Now let's move on to the smaller diamonds and drag those into the composition to help add a bit of variety to this. So let's come over now and I'll grab the slightly smaller diamond here, hit Control D to duplicate that. And I'm gonna bring it over here and just have it snap right there. Now I'll come over and grab one of the smaller diamonds here, Control D to duplicate that. And we'll just drag that until it snaps right there. And I'll just repeat this so that the two peaks we have going on here also have this. So I'll hit Control D, click and drag this up here. And Control D again, click and drag this over here. All right, so we have a pretty good shape going on here. I don't think I'm gonna actually need the smaller shape, the smallest shape here and I think that's fine. So next what I wanna do is just fill in each one of these diamond shapes with the color, and I'm just gonna go with a grayscale color scheme so everything will be between black and white. I also wanna get rid of the strokes on all of my shapes. So this is a pretty easy process here. So I'll start with this middle shape, which I wanna be a black color. So maybe I'll go with this one, and then I'll just shift click so that we get rid of the stroke. And for the outer shapes here, I just went with a dark gray, so let's go with maybe 80% gray and then shift click to get rid of the stroke. Then I'll come up to these two diamonds up here. So I want these to be the same color, but I want them to be a lighter color. So first I'll just shift click to get rid of the stroke. And now we'll just play around with the types of gray. So let's maybe go with 30% gray. And then for these two diamond shapes here, I want these to be a dark color probably similar to this color right here. So I'll just shift click on here to get rid of the stroke. And then we can click on one of these darker colors, maybe 90% gray for these. And then for the very top one, I'm gonna make this one black. So I'll just click on the black and I can shift click to get rid of the stroke there. And finally, I wanna make this color sort of light as well. So I'll just click and I'm actually gonna go with 20% gray on this, shift click to get rid of the stroke. But I also want to come over here to these two. I want to make these actually a little bit darker. So let's go with 30, let's go with 40% gray there. So there we go. Before we move on to the next step, I do just need to make sure that all of the edges of our shapes are touching now that we got rid of the strokes. So hold control and zoom in. So I'm gonna shift click on both of these because these two objects are connected. I don't want to move one without moving the other. So I'm just gonna scroll in here and adjust this. So that it properly aligns to the corner. And as you can see, this one's a little bit off as well. So I'll click on this shape and we're just going to drag it until it snaps to the corner there. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same for all the shapes. Make sure they are all touching. Otherwise this part, the next part coming up won't work. But once I have everything how I want it, the next step is to just select all of these and hit Control G to group them. And then I'll hit Control D to duplicate the group. And I'm just gonna move the duplicate off of the canvas for now. So now what I wanna do is make the bottom portion of this design flat instead of having the jagged edges on the bottom. So I'll just hold Control and zoom in. And I'm gonna click on the group and just come over here to Path, Combine. That'll combine everything into a single shape. You could change the color if you want. Doesn't really matter right now. But then I'll come over and grab my rectangle tool and I'm just going to click and drag the rectangle so it goes across the bottom here. 
and I'll just make this a different color than whatever my original shape color is. And I'll grab my selection tool here, hold control and zoom in with the mouse wheel. And we just wanna make sure that this is aligned pretty good with the portion that we're trying to clip. So next I'll click on the top shape here. You might need to hit control shift G to ungroup this. And once you've done that, you're gonna shift click to select both of these objects and then come over to path difference. And that'll leave you with this mountain shape here. So next what I'll do is I'll grab our original group and I'm just gonna click and drag this over until it snaps to the corners. And then I'll hit the page down key and that's going to lower this in the stacking order. And again, just make sure that these are nice and aligned. Now I'll shift click so that both of these are selected and I'll right click and go to set clip. So that will clip our original shape design here based on that mountain shape we just created. So hold control and zoom out a bit. Now I can click and drag these diamonds out of the way. We won't need those. And I'll click on this shape here and I'm just gonna drag this using the transform handles, holding the control key so that we can drag it down a little bit, like right there. And I'm just gonna move this over slightly. Next we need to add our text. So I'll grab my text tool and I'm just gonna click on my canvas and you can click anywhere. And for this one, I just use the fictitious name Black Diamond. And I wanna increase the size of this font, so I'll just double click inside of the text box here to select all the text. And I'll come up here and just increase the font size. You can also grab your selection tool and just increase it using the transform handles. Just hold the control key to make sure that you don't stretch out your text. So maybe about right here. I also wanna change the font of this, so I'll come over and just click on this little text icon. That'll bring up my text and font dialog. And then I'll just scroll through here until I get to that overpass text that I downloaded. So right here, so I'll click on that and I'll come over and click apply. And I'm just gonna drag the handle again, holding the control key to make this a little bit bigger. So I actually went with the overpass bold for this. And now I'll come over, grab my text tool, and I'm just gonna double click on the text again until it's all selected. And I just wanna increase the spacing between my letters. So we'll try 10 at first and maybe go a little bit bigger. So maybe 15. Let's actually go with 12 and a half. And now I'll grab my selection tool again and just drag this till it's pretty much centered here with the top and bottom portion of the logo, but also has a decent distance from the bottom right corner here, maybe about right there. So now I can grab both of these objects with my selection tool and hit control G. That'll group my two objects. And then I'll come back over here to the alignment dialog and I'm just gonna come up here and align this both vertically and horizontally to the center. And there's our final logo. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. Don't forget to click the bell icon and be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.